Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel and for my new subscribers, I'm glad you're joining us. My name is Yvonne. In today's video we're already at part uh, 10 from the waterfall journal. This is how far we came. We made all the flips, the large envelope, we covered the back and the fabric and the next step is selecting pages and putting them in. So I'm going to put this to the side. Yeah, I want to um, mention, uh, I saw two creators and I will link them uh, down below. And they both have a completely different style of making a waterfall journal because there are different styles. And I wanted to do it, yeah, just a, a bit different again. Um, the first lady I saw, uh, she used pretty much all neutral pages. And to, just to show you, she folded all her pages just uh, half. And she made a signature just to show you a bit. And this is crooked and there is a piece missing, but it doesn't matter for the explanation. <clears throat> because what she did, she had, I think, a TN style. And then you have a really small journal. This is a very, uh, this is a, a notebook style journal. And then I wanted to extend the back for the waterfall. So I need much larger papers because she made every paper yeah a bit the same like like it was or folded it double then put it in her journal and began tearing all the sides until she created the waterfall but like you see this music paper is a very large sheet if you see my hand it's very large you can measure it it's almost 13 inches and I'm not if I fold it double it's not enough to get to the edge of my uh, cover of the journal and that's why I made it a bit difficult for myself but I like the challenge this was in, in my head and I wanted to do it this way so because I couldn't just start folding because I want the waterfall really uh, yeah, nicely that it really shows that it's a waterfall. Take it out of my folder. I, I made because I'm at the moment I'm uh, working on three projects so I made I have these uh, plastic folders and uh, name them and put everything in there. Uh, yeah, I have large papers, of course, but uh, when I found out that it wasn't going to uh, be like they uh, did it, the, the first lady I saw it, yeah, put the papers uh, in half, and the second one I saw used scrapbook paper, and scrapbook paper is also very big. And she did it a completely different way, but because I want to use all kinds of papers, digitals and book pages, yeah, I had it. Uh, I had to think how I was going to do that. These we'll add later, because first I created the waterfall, and later you can always add more papers. This is our template from the the flips. I made a picture, the first I chose papers I like to use, uh, the digitals and the normal papers, and then I'm laying them the way I think they look nice. So that's why I made a picture uh, of it and printed it, because now I have different colors and different uh, styles. A digital, a vintage one, a digital, a vintage one. So just, yeah, this is completely up uh, your own preference, what you like. You can 
also use just coffee dyed paper. That doesn't matter because if you are going to decorate the journal, yeah, that doesn't matter because you are going to make the pages beautiful with everything you add onto it. But I'm going to, uh, this journal is for sale. So I wanted a beautiful mix of ruby and pearls, uh, digitals and uh, my favorite uh, papers. So that's my also a guide. And then I thought the papers I want to use, this was the template of my back, the first uh, I made, so not the original one, but I just made the template. And now it's handy because you know exactly uh, how large your largest piece of paper has uh, to be. And I marked about the, the width I wanted every waterfall injunction. Yeah, I don't know how you call that, but this part. Yeah, this is all newspaper, the, the way I did it. So this is one paper. And then you see just a bit of every. If you want this to be larger, say about uh, uh, half an inch, I don't know, that, that can be. Then you just um, lay them more, like, like on this picture, they're much wider away from each other. If you like that, that's all up to you. It doesn't matter, the construction will be the same. Just mark here, that's the, the most easy if you have a template of the back, and then mark where you want how large you want your waterfall pieces to be away from each other. And then you can just take this as a guide and fold your first paper. I started with the largest one and that's why I made them from newspaper because I had my papers and I also, uh, when I select papers, I look um, that I have the large ones at the complete height of the of the journal and I always have also let's see if I can find one see this is smaller this can be smaller so all kinds of papers that I have a, a beautiful mix of heights and uh, lengths and if you choose those uh, the papers in that way I made uh, a way yeah kind of a template in a uh, newspaper so this flower exactly this paper is this newspaper this newspaper bit it's exactly the height and it, exactly the length and I did that with all the papers I have. And then I knew, because folding them like this, the front, that won't be a problem. Now if I take the large one, the, that was the ledger, because it's the largest one, I started with that. I'm going to put this to the side. I'm going to show you how I did that. So this is my ledger paper. And I didn't, uh, this is also much higher, but that doesn't matter. First we have to create a waterfall and then you can decide how uh, high do I want this, do I want to fold this up, do I want to cut it. That's always something you can do later. But I just started with my newspapers, I took uh, about the, the complete height and I wanted my first page to be just a bit in because maybe I, I want some lace and then that will be sticking out but that I'm sure that it will stay inside my journal and then yeah, I did it like that and then I'm going to the edge of my template and I know this will be left over and that will be on the back. So I didn't uh, worry that much about how the back was going to look. And that was something I was curious about. 
is this possible this way? Because the bags will be all different because all the papers are different. And the next paper has to start a bit away from here, folded here, and then something else stays uh, left. So that's the way I started. Now I don't know if that was... I think it was in here. But I'm not going to mess up my, my templates. So I took every paper I have here in newspaper. So I folded this one first. Then I took my second one. So I'm going to put it aside. So this one was here. Then my next piece on the thing uh, on my picture was the music, the vintage music sheet. This is my vintage music sheet, and it has to be about there because I wanted about half a centimeter uh, the waterfall, and I know okay until there is my template of the. Uh, of the back, so I crease that and I'm going to put this in here and then you're going to see okay my first waterfall is created but I'm again losing that other piece I had oh no it's in here because that's one this this paper I added uh, later extra but I'll, I'll show you uh, when we get there. Then the next paper, this digital, it's going to be just about the same width as here, uh, as this, it will be here. And I, again, I'm going to fold it where my template ends. And I'm going, and you can use, if you put it like this, Okay, that's the right width. You can take your package that you already have and fold it over. And that's your little stack. And you see, here is also a bit of a um, waterfall creating. Next paper. Put it on here, about the same width what you prefer. I made them pretty small. I'm taking my stack again and I'm folding it over. And that's how I did all these different pages. Again, put it in the width I want it to be. Take my complete stack, turn it, and fold it over. And uh, now I have a template, so if I want, I don't have to do to do it exactly like I did the yeah my newspaper ones because now I can mark these on to the onto the real papers. But with real papers, you can do it already like this, and you're going to. Uh, take all your pages until you think, ah, now I have enough. First I thought my upper piece, my top piece, that I wanted it just as wide as the envelope. But then there were two little pages that I, I didn't really think that would be enough. So now my page, upper page, ends here. This is smaller than the envelope, but it doesn't matter because everything is a waterfall. So if you open this, you have this smaller page to start with. And again, an, another smaller page because I added, added one. You see, this, this isn't participating in the, in the waterfall. But again, 
like this it does and I wanted more pages because now I only have 12 and yeah that's not really much it doesn't have to be a lot but the person who buys this journal I don't know if they want to journal in it or decorate it and then yeah I was thinking about 15 about 15 16 pages and then both can be uh, applied you can journal but you can decorate it also so this is kind of an extra page and they get wider every uh, every time and if I want like the the pages I got left I can put that in here because it won't interfere with the waterfall because it stays in but you have an extra interest when you come to this page that it's another layering inside the waterfall and that makes it fun so if you want yeah to be a bit a bit more precise but i wanted to know that's why i made the, the newspaper templates if this was possible the way i was thinking and then i turned them around and i looked do i like this because it didn't have to be, uh, in my opinion, didn't have to be the same waterfall as in the front. But I did want variation. So this is very wide. I can always trim that if I want to. And then there's smaller side. Well, I did, well, it was a big paper, but I'm going to fold it. So it's smaller than a little one is left because this paper wasn't large enough for this piece that I needed for the waterfall and just a small piece was left but the beauty of this one you can just use it as uh, journaling but you can also add something to it later like a, a, yeah, a kind of a flip extra you can attach it on here and then you have a full page it doesn't matter and a, a wider page and then a smaller one and here I folded it over so here you do have all kinds of different widths of papers that makes it interesting and later I checked with these papers this picture I turned around the pages and looked if it was interesting the, the, the back sides together with each other but I'll show you when we are going to fold the, the real papers I will show you how that works and mostly if you uh, definitely when you print double-sided but I printed uh, backgrounds and you can always because I did that later this one is going to be the other way around because it would it looked nicer uh, on the back and on this side it doesn't really matter it, it's more that uh, there was something light between between the two digitals and the back side of this paper is plain so for the front it didn't matter but in the back it was more nice that there was uh, text on the paper so it's a tip if you want it more that you know exactly how it's going to work you can uh, make a template of uh, your newspaper or other papers you have and uh, then you know for sure that that you're really going to like the construction uh, the way you want so I'll show you how I started and then I'm going to put the scissors aside and this one is also <laughs> a bit tricky I want to uh, uh, fold it up but I was thinking do I want the empty side up and the text here or do I want this and then you have a lot of empty space to decorate and write and this is also almost empty but I chose to do it this way because you can add journaling in here and yeah in a way most of us 
like the ledger because of the writing, the script, and the backside is completely empty. So lots of room for journaling if you want to. So this paper will go here. And now I can use my cardstock to fold it. Let's see that I'm a bit straight. Like that. And I use, because most papers are pretty straight, I use the, the edge of the paper to make the fold. And if everything's correctly, then this coordinates. Let's see what paper is in here because the wallpaper. Let's see where that is. Ah, oh, that's this one. Yeah, I'll show you what I did because I added that later. Um, this is my my ledger. And my fold line is here. So this is my front. And this is my back piece. So I can use my templates to mark and then fold, or I'm going to fold them the way I did these uh, newspaper ones. It's not really straight, and I see. I thought this paper would be uh, completely straight, but it's not. But that doesn't matter. Let's see, like that. Take my bang folder, increase it a bit. So this will be my top side, and. Um, yeah, this will be uh, the center. I think I want it. Mm -hmm. And I want this in the middle. I thought. No, then I'm. Oh no, yeah, I want to. Yeah, the empty side. The wallpaper is going to be in the middle, now I'm thinking, but and that's not straight because it's adapted to the ledger. So the ledger is folded here, so this paper has to be folded here also. And now I have to decide if I want this side or this side in the middle. Hmm. I put wallpaper on here, so I'm... Hmm. I'm going to uh, fold this up and think about it a bit, <laughs> because I can use this like this. And then you have the writing next to each other. Oh, there's so many decisions. It's it's brutal for me because I keep doubting everything because it all looks beautiful. So all the options are nice. I'm going to leave this piece pretty large. So I'm going to fold this up. And again, until they're sewn in, I can always think, ah, I don't like it like this. I'm going to fold it up like that. But I'm going to do it like this. Because now you can uh, uh, see the writing and you still have a pocket to, uh, to put something in. If I want this in the middle, oh no, it's not possible in front. 
No, because this is the right side. I, I thought I could uh, flip it, but I can't because I already uh, folded this. No, it has to be like this. And this will be exactly, well, about exactly in the middle. So it's framed with the Lego paper. Now I only have to decide if I want this in the middle. I think I do. Because if I fold it, it will be... I'll put it aside and I'll decide later because that doesn't really matter. Then I'm going to flip these over because now we're using this uh, piece. And this is also very large. So then we have two pockets. I don't know if I like that. Hmm. But this comes until here. Then my music sheet will come here. Just a bit. I'm going to flip over my ledger. And I'm going to fold over my music paper. And my first waterfall is created. I can check a bit if it's straight. And I really want to keep this uh, torn edge. And I always like the, the keys of the music. Oh, this is not. And I have to get rid of something because otherwise we will have this is very small or I have to make it really smaller but then we have a pocket here and a pocket here so it can be that I'm going to trim this I'm going to leave the music uh, to the height let's see how much do I have to trim no I'm going to trim the music sheet This um, is it possible to have something shown? Yeah, then I'm choosing to just tear off a bit here and then leave it a bit larger there. Mm, that's pretty tight. No, that's it's too much. Then let's see how big this is. This is really small, so I can take off a bit more of this. Let's see, I'm going to put a little mark here. Yeah, maybe I'm way too precise, but that's up to your own opinion. You see, now I am here with my mark, and this paper will still fit in that, so you can see a bit of the music paper peeking out of that, and that's something I, I do like. So that's my template, my ruler, and I'm just going to tear eyeballing it the bit. And it's real vintage paper, so it tears very easily. Get rid of my mark. I will probably have to uh, reinforce this. So, oh, the other way around. Let's see. Yeah, the ledger is just peeking out. It's all going to stay inside my template. Then, up for 11. And now we're coming to this. And I made a picture and I think I later I changed things because now I'm thinking how much I uh, 
if I use this side here on the front or if I change my mind. Let's see. to use this. I'm sorry, this is also a bit of a, <laughs> a process for me and if you can always fast forward but um, yeah maybe you'll learn how to um, to approach something like this and yeah for me that's also uh, I, I don't mind because it's a learning curve and I don't mind because for next time, yeah, you have learned something. And folding this over, and we created our next waterfall. Then the next page, I'm, I'm flipping these. Maybe I can put them a bit on frame. I'm flipping these so I know that I'm doing it correctly. My favorite. German font that has to be in here, of course. Mm. Yep, just a bit. Flipping it over and folding it over. These two are about the same. So maybe later I will cut a piece of here, but that can always uh, come later. First, it's important to get the waterfall uh, correctly in the front. Yeah, we're still doing good. And the next page, it's the digital and on the back I uh, printed uh, a light I think this is coffee kind of a coffee stain because I, I did use uh, printables here I want to let the music uh, paper peek out but it's not something you have to worry about now um, because you can do it later you can shift the, the papers in height but yeah, it doesn't uh, need to be smaller because these are already smaller. So that's my waterfall. And I'm just going to mark it. Flip this over and now I can use the line of my paper to score it. Or to fold it, and later we can adjust uh, and now you're sure because it's a waterfall uh, if your uh, widest piece stays in the journal then you're okay then all these will uh, It gets more bulky. It gets more bulky. Maybe I had to. Hopefully. Um, right, so this. And it's large enough, I don't have to cut something off. Take my stack, fold it over, just mark it. And I can fold this like that.
No, maybe it's going to stick a bit out. And then this digital. Really love this flower. I used a couple of kits from Ruby and Pearl. I will uh, link them in the description box. Yeah, I'm still going the right way. Now I can use the about the edging to fold it over. And now the packaging. That was the receipt, and this was the flower. And now the packaging, and I can choose the way I want to do that because it's a large piece. And I thought I won't trim it in the, the length. So I can still decide what I want to do with it. Um, I want it to stay just in, so I'm going to tear it. I marked it there, so I have room here and I have some room there. So it's uh, in the line with the, the larger papers, because most of them are smaller. And if I later think, oh, no, I, I want uh, a bit more off, I can always do that. Um, this, I don't know if I showed it before. I did it with a hot glue gun. It's just a, a very cheap plastic uh, ruler. And with the hot glue gun, I made uh, indentations in there. I'll try to find who did this because it's not my idea. I saw it from another creator and I thought, wow, that's a good idea. And um, I thought I'd give it a, give it a try and uh, I really like it. And, oh, I just didn't try it yet with packaging paper. <laughs> With the normal paper, I, I tore it uh, more often, but packaging is uh, a little different. It's, it's very stiff. And it's very different than the tearing of the, the, the real tear ruler from Tim Holtz or the, the deco paper trimmer. But I really like it that it's uh, yeah more rough. I could have torn it myself, but that doesn't matter. I'm. Oh, it's crooked. Let's see. This is. This is a bit crooked. Hmm. That's not good. Let's try it again. So my paper, yeah, because I tore the papers. I don't think the papers are really straight. So, I'm doing that again because the waterfall, I like it when it's, uh, it's pretty neat. I saw someone who did a waterfall also and they tore all the edges by hand. Very beautiful, but the, the real rough tearing by hand, it, I never succeed uh, with that, so I didn't want to try it uh, with this one. I can always do it uh, at some other time. I want this piece because I like it that it's uh, not straight. So I'm going to take my stack again, flip it over. And I'm going to fold this. And this I can adjust later uh, where I want this. Because maybe I want to do, I clip this for a minute. And I'm going to leave this because now I can 
adjust it the way I want. I can leave this as an extra flap. And now I can also adjust when I'm cutting this. Here is a big space that I'm going to leave it until here. And then an extra flap or a side tuck. But for now I'm going to leave it just the way it is. It's too long, but that doesn't matter. When it's cut, it's gone and we can't change it anymore. It is getting thicker, of course, than the newspaper, so I hope I'm still fitting in here. Hopefully. Yeah. And I know this is interfering. No. No, I'm going to uh, at least cut something off because it's interfering with the um, yeah, interfering with the rest, so I'm going to about the middle here like that. And now this can uh, I think that's, that will uh, be able to stay. Take it again. Because here it's not that big of a deal. There are holes in the, in the paper because it was a, a large piece, but that's something I don't mind. I think I'll just tear off a bit and then I can always turn it more if I want to. Yeah. Like that. Let's see, where are we? Here. Still fits. It's tight. Then in my template, it's the light music page. I'm going to put this a bit more like this. So we are at this page now. And this oh, is a double page, so I have a lot. Uh, and now I'm thinking, what did I do? Ah, I just took half. So I can choose for this or this. I'm going for the complete music. Mm, like that. Put this back here so that will stay intact. And oh, I have to remove the clip. <laughs> that can't stay. Like that, oh. flipping it over, and let's, oh, let's cook it, try it again. Next one, that's the script page. Yeah, script on this side and the backing on the other side. Also, just the waterfall with I chose. So, this is going to be here. See, this is smaller than this, but here you have the waterfall effect. It's just different than here. It's here, here it's more neat, but then you can really see how the, the waterfall works. And in, in the back, it's a bit more random. This is a very small uh, paper, but I crinkled it up a bit because it was very uh, smooth and yeah, not really how I like it. But this was my uh, all-time favorite green paper for quite some time, but uh, I can't get it anymore. 
in the in the store where I bought it. It's not available anymore. Here I have to or trim this, or I have to. Let's see what I'm. I have to put it like this because the papers are almost as big, just a bit. So I, later I can make that a bit bigger so that the waterfall goes all the way. The green, and then here it's on this side, I think. Where did I put the name? I have the braille paper, so it's still exactly the way it's supposed to be. This is the largest side of the paper again. And let's see that I have all my elements. And this will be too tall, uh, too, too wide. And let's see. Oh. The paper is very thick and it, it goes crooked. Try it again. Maybe if I clip it here, let's see if I am doing a better job then. Take it off and now I can uh, position it better. This is very thick uh, paper. I don't know, the, I, I buy it from uh, a Dutch uh, creator. I have no idea where she gets it because uh, they're completely white, so it, it looks like a new book, uh, Braille. Not a, not a real vintage one, and uh, yeah, I didn't, I looked too much to the newspapers and they're very thin. The, the first paper has to uh, be more in, because now, but I'm, um, I'm going to look how, um, this is way thicker, so it needs much more space, because if I, Position it here. This is almost sticking out. Maybe I'm lucky. So I, I don't know where she uh, where she gets those because yeah, they're not. Uh, I, I don't think they're from a used book, but maybe they're misprints or something. I have no idea. I tried to find uh, the braille papers myself, but I couldn't. Yeah. And then the last one. The flower. Like that. Let's see if it's a bit straight. And the braille paper, I think I will uh, fold in or or cut. Maybe I'll <clears throat> I'll make a fold that this will be a nice waterfall. And uh, if I later decide there are too much flips or pockets or anything, I can always uh, tear it off. That doesn't matter. I keep saying it, but but it's true. That's the beauty of um, of junk journaling. Anything is allowed. Everything goes. That's so great. So this is our signature. It's pretty bulky for already just papers. So I'm going to put my templates aside. And now I will just can go to the side also. And now I'll clip this so it's it stays. I can uh, flip it easier. 
you can see there are all kinds of different sizes. The small one, this one, a small one again, this, and here there are some more different kinds. But in a way you constantly see a waterfall effect. But it's just different on the on the front than on the back. Yeah, this stays in as well. This is strangely I'm gonna cut that a bit. It's a bit it's crooked, but it's strangely crooked. So <coughs> when it's crooked, it can be. It's better when it's completely crooked, and it isn't so uh, noticeable. So let's put it in our. Yeah, we have still a few pages we can uh, can add. I'm going to put that to the side, but just for a minute to see how it looks. It will go in here, and this is what you will see when the journal is closed. This will be the waterfall pieces you will be seeing. And when you open it, there are even more uh, layers. Let's see what I'm... If I sew that in, does it stay in? This will be a problem. Um, I think I'll adjust it just a bit, and then our last waterfall will uh, will be smaller, or we will have eleven. Uh, Let's see how it looks. Yeah, it's just a bit, so it doesn't really count anymore as uh, as the waterfall, but it will be an extra page. So I don't really really mind. It's just sticking out a bit, but now it stays in, and I like that the. The, the small border of the fabric is showing also. Really looking good. And then... I'm thinking if... Yeah, I, I'm going to put this in. Because this is going in here. Now I have to pay attention where the correct fold line is. Yeah, that's too bad. I I had to start a bit. Ah, I didn't have to freeze it again. I could have just ah, that's too bad. Mm. Maybe I'll take another sheet, and uh, because I want to sell this journal, I want it to be uh, be nice. So maybe I'll take another sheet and uh, and I didn't have to have to fold it. I could have just uh, cut a sliver off and maybe even put it the same as this because now I'm not sure what yeah which fold this one. Yes, and this will be in the middle here. Yeah, I'm going to do it like this, because then you will see this. Yeah, just about the middle here. And now I have to be careful that I use the correct fold line. I think I like that. Just a little mark. And then erase my mark. 
and fold it like this. So this will be the middle of our signature. Like that, another layer. And now you see that this is also an extra layer in between that looks nice. Yeah, it's just peeking out, so that's okay. And then maybe I want some smaller pages in here. I like this brown paper. I have to reinforce it, I think, because it's... Uh, it's also a very old, uh, an old book page. And here on this side I have to trim it because it goes beyond the uh, waterfall. So if I have to, then I have to make it shorter like this. So put my ruler on here. And in a way, this is the, the creator I saw first, this is what she did. Every page she folded everything double, and every page she adjusted accordingly. And now I'm going to flip it over, because on this side we also have the book page, and here it's fine. I can always put this flip to that side if I want to, but the page is going over it, so Still a beautiful um, waterfall. So that's just an extra page in there. Here maybe this one. Um, oh yeah, I have to stay in. Maybe I can look on the back side. I have to stay in here, and then this creates another layer. I have to, oh no, this, that is the back side. I have to stay in this page, but then I have white on white. That's not something I like. No. This is very thin paper. Let's see again. Now, this I like, but this, this I don't like. The, the, the difference is too small. I have to stay in here. I don't know. Now I have 12, 13, 14 pages. Let's see, this I really like together. This also, this also very much. Just be nice and page in here. Don't like it there because there's already text. This is very, no, if I want that. Maybe then the numbers. No, I'm not feeling it, so I'll stick to the 14. Because now there is a beautiful uh, mixture of papers, and uh, I have this, but I also like it to just tuck in as a beautiful uh, beautiful piece of paper and I put a ledger on the back. Maybe it's green on the back, so that's also beautiful. Let's see where well, I saw something there. Um, Let's 
this will be nice. This will be nice. That could be. This also, and this also, but I don't know if I'm going to lose a lot of the image of this because it has to stay inside the waterfall. And then I have two digitals behind each other. That's something I don't like either. So maybe here. I have to stay there. And then if I fold it over, then the letter will be there. Can maybe be a bit more, and this would be okay. Yeah, and I like it as a page. Yeah, okay. crease it. So now I have 15, and that's quite an amount. Uh, definitely, when someone will um, will be decorating it. So now we have to check, and mostly I start in the middle, uh, how we position our pages in, uh, in the signature. But I'll cut this video because otherwise it will be very, very long. And I will be back with part 11, and then we'll position the papers, we'll poke the holes, and we'll be sewing signature in because that's the complete step also. So as always, thank you so much for watching and supporting my channel. If you like this video, I would love for you to subscribe, give a like or a comment. I would love to hear from you and I will see you in the next episode. Bye!